Hey guys, welcome to Rock Talks. Today we're talking to Patrick Mameli from the legendary death metal band Pestilence. We discuss the new album Exitium, why he's against COVID vaccination and testing before getting into a concert, his plan to get dropped by Roadrunner back in 93 with the album Spears, and the upcoming tour playing the whole testimony of the Asians album. If you like this interview, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Hello, Patrick. Uh, how are you, man? Thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Rock Talks. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, Rock Talk, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I want to say a big shout out and a big hello to all the people in Lima and uh, the rest of the guys in Peru. All right, great. So let's get right into the interview. Let's talk about the new album, Exitium, right? So did I say yeah. that correctly, yeah. Exitium? Yeah, it's it's exitium, but it's pretty much the same. So, exitium, yeah. right? It's a Latin word, right? It means total destruction, I think. Yes, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It it actually means the total destruction of society as we know it. You said that on another interview. Can you explain a bit more about this idea? Well, you know, it's uh actually it's it's pretty simple. Um, I have been noticing uh, quite for some time now that the world is uh, is changing, and I am very aware of my environment. I'm very aware of stuff that is happening, you know, that is surrounding me and you know um, my fellow neighbors and everybody that I know and everybody that you know that you know that I visit and that I see. They they have pretty much the same feelings about. Uh, modern day society where where um, it's turning from like very being social and being you know socially aware and being helpful to more of an egoistic society where it's um, everything is more controlled by uh, in by 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 technology. So I, this is a technocratic society we turn into, and this is something I think it's um, it's very bad. It's bad for the uh, evolvement and uh, the constant evolving of, of humankind. Um, I think we, we're heading into a wrong direction, and th that's why I I thought that exitium, total destruction of the world that we that we come to know and come to love, has finally arrived. And you see it around you. You see what is happening, and. Um, you know, it's you, you don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to uh, to to look around you and see what's happening and see what's happening to to society and see what's happening to the people, how they change their mentality and how technology takes over. And uh, I think it's a bad, it's a real bad thing. Yeah, it's kind of like a devolution, right? Like the opposite of evolution for for humankind. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah definitely. Yeah, and and then the the funny thing about this is that you know they are promoting this way of living so much uh, or this lifestyle so much that they they actually think that we believe this is the right way to go, um, and um, you know I think that we have to go back to uh, a, a normal society where governments are not you know you know just to fill their own pockets with money uh, and, and let the people just you know, just let the, just the people just die and, and be, you know, they, they're, 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 they don't work for us. They work for themselves and, and governments should work for the people, right? Yeah. Really. You know, and especially um, with this, with this past year, um, I see that our government, I, I can't talk about every government, but our government in the Netherlands, uh, they, ha they have not helped us with any um, with any financial support. I'm talking about people that are in this type of business, in uh, um, the music industry. Music industry. Yeah. Uh, yes, and or, or even the cultural aspect of it, you know, painters, um, you know, singers, you know, anything that has to do with music and with the joys of life that we, that we all come to enjoy so much uh, and that we kind of took for granted. Um, these... these um, virtues have been taken away from us and 
now uh, we came to the conclusion that that this is the last thing that they that they want to uh, you know put back in order. So I have been out of a, of a job or out of money for over a year uh, because they don't care that much about musicians and you know whether they are able to to cope with with this situation that they actually created themselves for us. I'm not sure, but I think the Canadian government uh, does that for musicians in Canada. I, I think. Uh, well, well, I don't live in Canada, so I would not know, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe that's a rumor. You don't, you don't know. I know some people in Canada that tell exactly the same thing that, as I, because I know a, a, mm -hmm. a radio host there, uh, and he's able to do uh, the radio because you know. But it, it, actually, to perform as a musician with a band or or just like when you're a performer to go on stage uh it, it's an impossibility you know it, it, yeah. they're finally opening up society a little bit but now they come with these rules that everybody has to be tested or vaccinated so there have been a lot of people that are against vaccination um and um, and, and so these people are are not allowed to to visit concerts um, which is which is something that I find it's like totally really ridiculous and and strange because yeah if the, if 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 my government gives me money to to survive for a year I wouldn't have all these problems now you know I, finally we're opening up now a little bit and yeah. I I think we have two or three shows planned uh, where people nice. can go. And, and see us, uh, but they have to be either vaccinated or or, or tested. And I'm fully against the, this idea of that you have to be mandatory vaccinated or mandatory tested in order to have these joys in life that that we took for granted, really. And uh, where are those shows booked in Netherlands? Uh, one is booked in Netherlands. One is booked in uh, uh, Czech Republic, and one is booked in Italy. Mm -hmm. Uh, are those those shows booked for this year? Yes, these are the shows that are booked for for this year. But uh, let me tell you how bad it is. Um, I remember when we were supposed to go um, on tour with Possessed um, uh, to the U.S. And this was a big deal to me because, you know, Jeff is a dear friend of mine and, you know, everybody loves Possessed, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, and Jeff loves Tesla, and so you know, we, you know, we we met, and we're just you know, yeah, man, just such a regular, normal guy, you know, and just the inventor of death metal, you know, and nothing, nothing else, you know. So that's kind of crazy. And then then when that was uh, not possible, uh, you know, then other um, uh, stuff got canceled. Bigger uh, festivals, bigger shows. We we're supposed to do the. Testimony of the Ancients tour. Uh, now we have to postpone it to next year. Uh, but then, uh, when can I tour for Exitium? So there's a lot of problems that uh, that arose, and and the solutions are smaller than the problems that arise in the same time. So is a, a testimony of the Ancients a special show uh, is still on on your mind? Is it's going to be just a show or a whole tour? No, this is this is going to be a whole tour, but now because um, we still have um, issues at the border, if you go to a, to a border, normally we take the tour bus and we go from from city to city, right? Well, now there uh, now there's um, countries where they are red or orange, and we are not allowed to enter. So then we would have to exclude these, uh, and normally we do a tour. Um, um, you know, three to five, six weeks. And and now we can't even tour with a huge um, touring bus that we normally usually have because we can't pay it. Yeah. Like a tour bus costs like $1,500, um, uh, you know, per day. So you have to uh, generate quite an amount of money to, yeah. you know, to, to travel and um, have, have an, uh, a supporting band to go with you and stuff like this. So it's like a, it's like a big organization and um, it's, it's, really, it's really difficult. And like I said, with the non-involvement of the, our government, they make it very difficult for us to, um, you know, just to, 
to do pretty much anything, you know. And um, we, we feel as musicians in the Netherlands um, pretty, pretty useless and worthless because they make us feel this way uh, that they don't really care uh, about us, you know. Wow, it sounds like a Michael Jackson song. But, you know, but this is... Yeah, but this is the truth, man. It's 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 crazy, yeah. you know. I, I I'm really hoping this 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 will turn around and we get to do these shows again because it will, man. It will. Uh, yeah, because I I really see that fans they 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 are longing for this because there's yeah. nothing as beautiful in life as to go to a live concert and see all these the energy and the happy faces and oh. everybody enjoying music at the same time and it's live. Yeah. Come on, man. That's that's heaven, right? That's, that really that's heaven on earth. <laughs> yeah, that's what we. That's why we are in this business to to make people happy and make sure that everybody awesome. enjoys the music. Right. So you're going to include, uh, I think, a choir and other musicians for this testimony of the ancient uh, special tour. No, we. Uh, you know, technology will. Uh, uh, you know, since we live in a tech technocratic society, uh, technology is also um, uh, useful. For for us we will have um you know all kinds of sequencing um you know right. going yeah so choirs and all this stuff okay. it, it will be like like on the album it will pretty much will be pretty much the same um but always we always want to do something special so the songs are you know are being prepared and not to sound exactly like the album but there's a, there's a couple of wow effects in there as well that people uh you know might want to see in here definitely so this will happen 2022, right? Yes. And will and it will start in the States or Europe? No, I think it will start in Europe and then we take it from there. I mean, there's talks now with the uh, with the promoter that was doing the uh, the possessed pestilence tour. Um and um he he really, really, I mean, really, really loves the new album. And so he's uh he's doing everything he can to to make it work and see the states um that that are open in in the united states uh that we can go and hit at least hit these states and make sure that you know um you know we get a nice all right so let's go back to the new album and uh, let's talk about the musical direction in my opinion it sounds like a combination of old school pestilence with new school pestilence meaning albums like resurrection macabre doctrine and obsidio and do you agree uh, yeah, I totally agree. Um, to, re to really be honest, it's like there is nothing really different from what I usually do when I record an album, right? Um, since I'm the uh, the only guy that is writing the music and the lyrics now, uh, like I have always done uh, in the in Pestilence, um, it's it's just my it's my signature um, way of playing music. So you always can hear. It is pestilence, and that's why I do everything myself. It's not like like I don't want to work with other people, uh, but in order to keep the pestilence style um, pure, um, it comes. It just comes from me. It comes from my heart and my my soul and my brain, I guess you know. Uh, so nothing really has changed in <clears throat> for me uh, composing wise. It always has been the same. The only the only factor that is always is different is the people that I work with. So the combination of people that I work with make, make the album. So uh, as you might know, it's always very important is the drummer. The drummer is pretty much the most important aspect of any band. Because yeah. if the drummer is, uh, if the drummer is, is, is uh, not in time or anything, the whole band will suck, right? So every time I, the, my, my biggest problem and my, biggest um priority is is to find a good drummer and pretty much the, yeah the, and pretty much the rest will fall into place after yes. the after the obsidio touring cycle uh you said on facebook that you were done with pestilence because fans didn't care about much the latest albums and they only asked for early stuff but five years later later you came up with the uh, radio right uh, an album that actually sounds close, in my opinion, to consuming impulse. And uh, my question is, did you want to give the fans what they asked for, or it was like a like a natural thing to write an old school pestilence album? Well, like like I just trying to explain this, I, I I never look back on any of the albums that I do, and I never listen to people what they want 
because if they want something, then they have to do it themselves. I have always uh, tried to follow my own path because uh, I'm stuck in this body and this is me. I, I'm stuck with my own mind and my, with my own brain and I have to follow my own life and rules. And the way I think about music is in a certain way. And that's why pestilence sounds like pestilence. So if people ask me, um, you know, because yeah, you are right, because I felt like being a jukebox and why would I make new music if people only want to hear out of the body or want to hear Land of Tears. So this is, for, but this is a problem for, for many, many bands yeah, um, that, that, sure. have, that have this because, you know, uh, look at Metallica, look at Slayer, look at Iron Maiden, look at all these bands where, where the, you know, or, 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 or a cannibal corpse where people just want to hear Hammer Smashed Face, right? And those, but those are the, the classics and I do understand this, but once in a while, uh, like the new Cannibal Corpse, they will come up with an album that sounds fresh and is just a little bit different from what they normally do. And this is, for me, it's not a rarity. I always do something else. So for me to keep it interesting for me and for the listener, hopefully, um, I, I change my, 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 my perspective on my own music, which only I can do really, and make sure that I come up with new ideas, but keeping the pestle style pure. So yeah. you say, hey, Dion sounds like consuming. I, I would rather say, uh, hey, Dion is a better version uh, of testimony because it has that testimony feel to it somewhat. And now um, I have to also mention is that um, musical taste is something that you cannot translate into something that is real because if you love the color blue and i love the color red those are just emotions and feelings right yeah but you can't actually describe to me why you love the color blue it's just what it is right so if you love a pestilence album and it's consuming impulse <laughs> right um and it's with martin van Bruner and 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 you love this combination there's on the other hand there's people uh, equally uh, amount of people that love testimony over consuming because they love this style but it's still the same guy writing all the music yeah. it's just different combinations so whenever you have the right combination uh, um, you know the right ingredients for a very good pizza then the pizza will taste really good you know some of the ingredients that may be not such a good idea and the pizza will not taste that good so Actually, with food, it's the same as with music. Some ingredients work and some ingredients don't work. So it's always like an experiment. And I think that we really succeeded with, with, um, with this experiment called Exitium because I'm using all these elements that I take from all my albums, yeah. but not being really listening to my albums because I don't listen to my own music that much. Yeah. Only It's uh, in your DNA already. Yes, yes. So, um, and if I found it, it sounds it sounds too similar or it has too much reference, I will not use it because I want to keep it fresh and interesting also for myself. So there's a thin line, what you can achieve and cannot achieve without having these giant leaps where people don't know what you're doing anymore. Because look what happened with Spheres, right? Now people say, oh, Spheres is such a cold album. But those were the same fans that, that dropped me like a... Yeah, they, they didn't care about that album then because they were really wanting to have Testimony of the Ancients Part 2. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, well, in my case, I, I like Spears as well. I actually, I, I, I love it when bands try to experiment. They, they want to do different, really different things. Like, like in, in that case of Spears getting the saxo, saxophones, and, and a lot of uh, synthesizers and, and, and keyboards. And that's why I love every Pestilence album because all of them, each and one of them has their, has their, their own sound, their own taste, their own uh, kind of Pestilence sound. And that's why, in my, in my opinion, the albums uh, Resurrection Macabre Doctrine and Obsidio are really, really awesome. And, and actually, I was kind of angry at those fans that say, 
hey man, I, I, I want to hear the, the old stuff. I want to hear uh, consuming Im impulse type of songs or testimony type of songs. And I was, and I was like, hey man, have you actually listened to the new stuff? It's actually way more technical, way more intricate and way more interesting to listen nowadays instead of just keep uh, trying listening over and over again the same albums don't get me wrong i love the classics as well but i think that uh, people should be more open minded about about discography and to every uh, every band in the world yes i think but i i think that's a, that's a problem that's within the the metal community is that yeah. they want to cling on very much to the to the old school um yeah. because when they when they grew up it gave them uh, such a special feeling you know when they grew up listening to the you know their uh, you know their their favorite bands so if they change too much uh, the, it almost feels like they're they're changing a little bit from their um you know from from their growing up you know and this is something that they don't really like uh so it, like i said it's an experiment and luckily uh this this time because Frankly, I always think I make the best album when I, when I record it and when I, you know, present it to the world. Uh, a lot of the times, um, I, I, I think I, I, I misjudged my own judgment, thinking that it was really, really good, and some people really don't like it because I guess of what you said that they only want to hear the classics. Yeah. Um, but that's a but problem, time, like you say. Yes. A problem. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but but then this time with Exitium, um, I, I think that, and I, it, it's not done on purpose, it's just like the way I make music, but I think this combination with the, with the rest of the Dutch guys in the band, uh, the combination of ingredients just worked. Um, the, the, because of Michiel is drumming the way he's drumming, because of my bass player, is, uh, Joost, is playing the bass that he's playing it, and uh, Rutger, my other guitarist, is doing his solos and his stuff, the way he's doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we were just like, uh, I guess, really lucky. Um, it, it was not really premeditated uh, to, to, to have such a, a huge success because I thought that Hey Dion was a huge success as well, but it was not being picked up uh, uh, that much. Uh, but now it seems that this album is blowing up really, really, you know, really well. And um, look look at all these uh, comments on, on YouTube and all the comments on all, on the Facebook uh, pages that people are um, sharing and and you know saying how much they love the new album. Uh, one person even said it's almost as good as testimony. Well, that's for me. That's a big compliment because uh, it seems like a testimony is like untouchable. Where I feel that yeah. I've done work that is so much better than than everything yeah. that I've done on testimony. You yeah, know, it's, it's like I have grown as a musician and also lyrically, I've grown so much. Uh, and it would be for me. It would be devastating for me to uh, to keep on playing the same way. It would be is like you know, not play football on the top level, but having to go back to like uh, just like the you know little lesser uh, league. You know, uh, you wanna you wanna yeah, you wanna be, be the best musician. You know, and you wanna evolve and you want to become better and. You know, you hope that people are evolving with you, and I think that we were just lucky with Exitium that people are getting so much into this album. Uh, it is yeah. more brutal. Uh, it is more brutal. It's more aggressive. I change my voice, like I change my voice on every album. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, it's so funny. It's like people don't understand how difficult it is to uh, keep on exploring and trying to be, uh, become a, a better musician and. And, and also a better singer and, and, and try to articulate so people understand what you're saying. Uh, most of these guys, they just growl and you don't hear a word what they're saying, right? Anything, yeah. You yeah, don't understand my, anything. So. Patrick, my next question is about uh, the, the vocal style on Resurrection Macar. Uh, I remember when that album came came out, it, it was like, like the, the comeback album for Pestilence, right? After all those years of silence. And I was hooked with the album like like that, like right away. But the, the thing I, I it interested me interesting interested me the most was the your vocal your vocal style was really low, really like uh, it, it sounds really different than other the other pestilence albums. 
But for the next album, uh, Doctrine, right? Doctrine, uh, you change it. And I was like, hey, what happened? This was really, really awesome. Why did you decide to change your vocals for the next album? Uh, it, it's very simple because um, 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 Doctrine was the first album we did with eight strings. Uh, eight string guitar is very low. It's got the F sharp. And that means that, you know, you have a problem with the bass anyways. Uh, so that's why um, at that time, uh, Jeroen, um, uh, was playing fretless and, and having seven string bass. So trying to find different um, notes to uh, not be in the way of the guitar. So um, the problem is if I would sing low, it would take the same frequency as all the lower uh, uh, lower tones and would we would have a, such a difficulty in uh, getting a good mix. mix so yeah. for me to scream and sing higher and be um, like a maniac like I was on that album, um, um, I think it turned out to be uh, correct in my way of thinking in changing the lyrics. Uh, oh, sorry, and changing my 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 style of singing um, um, to make it come through, um, you know, better with a different frequency that that the guitars and the bass were having. So if I was going to sing like Resurrection, you wouldn't be able to hear the vocals at all. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I understand. So in other interview, you said that spheres was used as a tool to get rid uh, of Road Runner. Can you tell us the story behind the Road Runner chapter? Well, when we first got when we first got signed by Roadrunner, we were like um, uh, this young demo band that didn't have any experience in anything really. You know, we didn't know anything about uh, uh, record deals or contracts or anything like this. Um, so when when we signed the first time when we signed, we had the shittiest deal ever, um, and um, I think it was we got six percent. Um, you know, from uh, after you know, paying everything back. So people have to understand that when you are, when you have a record deal, the only thing that means is that you will have distribution, right? Uh, record labels have distribution and you have labels that are bigger, that have better and bigger distribution and they have more money to push into the promotion uh, part of it. So when we had a budget to record um, um, Malayas, um, this money had to be paid back, right? And after, um, uh, you know, after we generate uh, money from selling CDs and stuff like this, um, after it's the break even point, um, we will get six, six percent of of what, you know, of, of the money that that comes in. So the other 94 percent goes to the record label. So we, we had such a bad we had such a bad deal that we finally had a uh, a lawyer look into it and then we 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 cranked it up to twelve percent. So we were really happy, but it was still shitty. Low, yeah. So yeah. as time was progressing, Festlands was getting better and bigger and um, getting more successful. Getting MTV rotation right back then. 92. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And, and listen, I mean, uh, you know, Cannibal Corpse was opening up for us, right? Yeah. We're, we're getting big, you know, especially after uh, Testimony of the Ancients, we were blowing up and everything was really, really going well. Uh, still, we were not making any money because with every, um, with el every album, you get a bigger budget, uh, but still the percentage uh, stays the same for us. So they will make the most money and we would have to pay them back for, you know, for the, for the studio time and for all this stuff that they do for promotion for the band. So. Uh, and tour support and stuff like that, you have to pay back. Um, so at that time, they were they were uh, contracting all these bands, all these bands, all these death metal bands, and they were flooding the the death metal scene with also some bad, you know, with some bad choices. And they were not paying any attention to pestilence anymore. Uh, and I'm not having that. So the, when it was time for us to do uh, the next album. Because after uh, testimony, I'm supposed to do three more albums for them. Mm. Um, so that was too much for me, and uh, and so um, I had to figure out a way for them to drop me, and so I can keep my name because they wanted me to do testimony of the ancients part two, right? And this would have been uh, this would have been a, a very successful album, and would have been one of the the biggest death metal acts, right? Um, but I didn't want to do this because, you know, 
mentally, physically, but also financially, we were not gaining anything from, from this. Uh, so when we came with Spears, um, they dropped us. And this is exactly what I wanted to do is uh, getting dropped by, by a major label. Uh, at that time, they were a major label. So I was dropped and I was free to go, but I was so fed up with uh, the way the music industry works that I just called it quits. I just stopped, right? I just had a regular life. I had a regular job. I always uh, worked in finances, uh, a financial accountant. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, like, a, I'm, I'm pretty smart, right? So I don't have a problem doing a regular job and just getting paid. So I was, I was happy, you know, for, for a little while. Uh, but you have to understand that when you are a musician by heart, um, yeah. this, this will never go, go away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want to go back. So, um, so in this meantime, in this first hiatus of, uh, you know, I, I think it was maybe 20 years or something like this when I stopped. I, I didn't make any music in the longest time. I can't even remember. Then um, in the meantime, people were still sending me emails and sending me requests and hoping festivals to ever uh, come back and all this stuff. And eventually um, I heard I heard King of All Kings, I think it was by Hate Eternal. Mm. And I was struck by the sheer aggressiveness of, of this. You know, I, I something that kind of hit hit my, I don't know, it just kind of hit me and I was like, man, I have to go back into music and make a difference. You know, I just want to be a part of this again. So when I came back with Resurrection Macabre, that's why the album is, um, is the way it is, right? It's that's very brutal. Great album, yeah, yes, and I also think that um, it was a goodbye to, to the melodic solos and all the stuff that people really enjoyed from uh, Twist the Truth and Land of Tears, um, you know, because uh, this will never come back. So people need to cherish uh, and listen to those albums because uh, I will probably never make... Um, another like melodic solo like this although a lot of people like it uh, I, i'm not too fond of it uh, anymore it's just not me anymore uh, i just want to express myself differently i guess that's okay yeah but there is something i don't understand so you wrote an album so uh, that experimental as a sphere in order to uh, upset the people from roadrunner so they drop you it was like that yes oh, all right but you did a great job. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did a great job with this and then up. And and that's this 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 one this this is one little thing that people uh, haven't heard yet is because uh, you know people ask me so how come the record label um, let you go into the studio and record an album then if they if they didn't hear if because if they would have heard your demo and stuff like this they would never agree on you recording spheres right yeah. Okay, so what we did is that when we did one demo for, and we did three th songs, uh, and we played Mind Reflections, um, Soul Search, and um, I think it was Demise of Time, and we and, and we played it really brutal, and it sounded like really crazy and cool, uh, and then and then they they trusted us because they were because they were not trusting us anymore with with anything either because they heard stuff like that we wanted to quit and all this stuff so. When we gave them the demo, they thought that it was going into this direction, and then when the album came out, it was totally, it was totally the opposite. So, um, yeah, there's yeah. nothing that they could do to promote it, and uh, they really hated it. But now, um, they they it's even cult album, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, they say it's a cult album, but for me, it has such a bad taste. Yeah, um, but bye. Yeah, I, yes, yes. It brings it, it brings back nightmares, and I knew it right. was going to be I very understand. tough. It would have been very tough on me um, to call it quits and uh, leave it uh, to this because I, I knew that Pestilence had so much um, talent and 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 stuff going on uh, that it was like a huge sacrifice to do this. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the death metal scene back in the late '80s and early '90s? Um, I think it, it was already changing a little bit in the 90s, but um, coming from um, late 80s, when everything was happening in Florida, you know, and then when Morbid Angel was getting bigger and DSI was getting big and 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 and, and, and Cannibal and, and Obituary, yeah. you know, because 
I was never really uh, uh, like a, a Norwegian or Swedish death metal guy. You know, I never was very much interested in the Scandinavian uh, death metal. I was always more interested in the the American styles because I always thought that they had a little bit more, um, I don't know, finesse. I don't know something something that was like really really cool, you know, yeah. and uh, so. And I was a big fan of Ripping Corpse, uh, which was like uh, one of those bands that were not really death metal and, and not trash. They were just like doing something else, which I really, really liked. And uh, and um, and so and so and so Sean, he heard the uh, the new the new Pestles album, and he's a big fan. He was like, "Fuck, man!" You know. And Sean, you know, he played with Hate Eternal. He's the main guy um, in, in uh, Ripping Corpse, so. So that 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 was good. That was good for me to to have to have his you know his um, you know to have his thought on the album, and he really really likes it. So yeah, so we were just like really getting into all these all these bands from the stage. You know, we were doing the tape trading thing like everybody did back in the days. You know, back and forth. So Patrick, in another interview, you said that you actually uh, learned uh, for from Chuck Schuldiner. You learned some things business-wise, but what did you actually learn from the guy from Death? Well, you know, it, it was around the time when, when we did, and recorded the album in, in Florida uh, with at Morris Sound uh, the, that we would get to, you know. The first album? Go, no, it was the third album, Testimony. Oh, Testimony, okay. Yes, and, 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 and before that, um, of course, we did, we did uh, a tour with, with Chuck, so I had my, uh, you know, I had my, my talks with him as well. Uh, and then also during uh, testimony time that when I started ventilating more of my problems um, uh, about, you know, the stuff that is happening with me, with Roadrunner, um, you know, we had chats and we had talks about this. And, and then he said he shared his um, experiences and how he would resolve problems. And this is something that I that I've, and I've learned from because um, he was he was rather picky and he was rather uh, very clever about certain things you know that stuff that i probably you know didn't think of myself how you could you know how you could um approach um you know an a and r guy or something you know to to, to benefit for, um, with your own band and also um you know with the merchandise and how how he thinks of uh, uh distribution and promotion how you can do a lot of things yourself and not depend on the record label so we had all these discussions and i really learned from this so And, and and the thing is, is that you know you don't have to agree with everything, right? Of course. I yeah. mean, you know, and 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 so yeah, but and I do understand that you know Chuck is a saint, and everybody loves the guy, and, and he made he made incredible music, right? Um, but you know, we are all human, and you know, when we did uh, uh, the tour with Pestilence, when we opened up for them, and then with Carcass. Um, We were really successful, and also the shows were really heavy and brutal, and we were banging, and everything was just like. And he and he didn't like it. He didn't like that we had, you know, because they were headliner, and 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 we had all this success, and 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 so um, there was some jealousy going on, and and you know, and and we we just had respect. So and then he didn't treat us very nice at 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 certain points in time during the tour. Um, which I understand because it's just it's only human uh, to to yeah. act in a certain way, right? So, you know, it, but it was not it was never like um, you know like uh, I, I disliked him. We just had disagreements on certain things, and I, you know, but but this is uh, you know this is normal. Uh, what do you think about these current death metal bands, uh, which are more technical, you know, kind of progressive death metal band, kind of like the Faceless? Interloper, alluvial, these uh, new nuclear blast bands. Uh, do do you dig them? Do you do you like that uh, style, that death, death metal style? Um, I, um, to be honest, I don't I don't listen to to any any of those bands. I I I, I would not know. I mean, I do uh, know the Faceless, right? I I we 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 done some shows with them, I think, and um, and uh, the guy uh, he came up to me and he says he loves Pestilence, so uh, that's that's enough for me. Um, but for, for me, um, I, I don't agree with the word technical because tech, uh, technical 
Um, explain to me what technical is. Is technical um, stringing a bunch of riffs together and the listener doesn't know where the where the one is or how does that work or 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 or, or is it technical to live in arpeggio land and uh, and do a zillion arpeggios and have blast beats over it and nobody knows where the one is is this technical no for me technical is for example listen to jazz music listen yeah. to classical music this is technical because these guys they, they work with musical modes right you have the you have the major you have the minor you have the dominant and there's a few other ones and 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 i don't hear that i don't hear that with pretty much all these metal bands they don't have chord progressions everything evolves around the, the last string that they have which is either an e a d a b or whatever the low tuning that they have right so you know, for me, I don't know what technical, well, I do know what technical is, but it's not what I'm hearing is technical, you know? Uh, so again, for me, it's important uh, to write good songs. And this is, um, a few bands are capable of doing this. One of, them, one of them is possessed because they can actually write good songs, right? And this is why this band is, is so popular and everybody loves jazz because I know Jeff writes a lot of the riffs, you know? So you have to understand that a, a song has to have a beginning, a, a midsection, a bridge and an ending. And it, has to, and it has to be logical. So in order to, you know, have emotions uh, and, and not a zillion riffs or a zillion notes coming by uh, on such fast speeds where the dynamics is totally gone, you know? So I, I rather, um, not listen to any of those bands, you know, not disrespecting anybody because, you know, they they probably think of Pestilence as being a boring band uh, with a beginning, a midsection, a bridge and an ending, right? So <laughs> everybody lives in their own reality and I do understand this, but, yeah, you know, great. Pestilence has a lot of fans, so I must be doing something right. So, I, and I'll leave it to that, I guess. Yeah. So since you actually toured with the Faceless, the, the Faceless, you get the you get the chance to see them live perform. Yeah, I, I heard I heard some I heard some parts of it, and you know, uh, um, musically some parts uh, sounds. I mean, they have a good drummer, but I think that they change uh, lineup um, a lot as well, right? Yeah, but the main songwriter songwriter Michael King is there yes. for, like for all albums. And yeah, he's yeah, he and plays he, guitars and sings as well. Yeah, and that's the guy that loves Pestilence, so I'm I'm cool with them. Now I'm cool with them. <laughs> yeah. All right.